we go and in we go slowly but and then but over and then in and close you join me inside the mclaren 765 lt long tail for short and i am all kinds of excited to get behind the wheel of this car for a couple of reasons the first is that the 675 LT, just switch the two numbers seven and six around and you'll get confused, don't worry, uh, was the, the predecessor to this car. And it was sort of my indoctrination to reviewing supercars. And it absolutely floored me. The performance was out of this world. It blew my mind. And now here I am in the successor. The other reason is because the long tail philosophy for McLaren dates back to 1997 with the F1 GT and it's still here, the same tenets of less weight, more power, more exclusivity and more track focus are here in the 765 LT. This isn't the only way you can spend your Boku dollars on a track focused performance machine. You've got the Lamborghini Huracan Performante, now the STO. And on the softer side, at least until they come out with a more hardcore version, you have the Ferrari FA Tributo. So we need to see if the McLaren 765 LT owns this segment. That's today on Miles Per Hour. And there it is, the McLaren 765 Long Tail. Long Shadow, Long Tail. Yeah, try to keep your Long Shadow off the Long Tail miles. This one is painted Ludus Blue. It is an MSO defined, McLaren Specialty Operations defined color, meaning it does cost extra, like nine grand and some change. But it is spectacular, especially in that sunlight. Thank you, son. At least I think so. Do you like this color? Would you prefer if it was in a more like eye searing neon green or orange, like some Lamborghinis? Or do you like the kind of distinctive original look of this blue? I like it. I like the metallic flake. I like how it works with the carbon fiber and the gray painted pieces. Someone spec this out nicely. Mostly. There are some things I'll get to that I don't love. Before I get too deep into this review though, let's quickly speak about the channel and how you should subscribe if you haven't done so already. Because when you do that, you'll get access to daily uploads, POV day drives, POV night drives, live Q and A's and reviews like this one. I also have up a POV Canyon drive for the 765LT that you don't want to miss. So check out all of that and subscribe. Hit the bell to get notified so you don't miss out. Enjoy yourself. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so simply by liking, commenting, and sharing this video. If you want to go above and beyond though, you're great. And you can do so by getting Miles Power t-shirt or sticker or by becoming a patron on a Patreon account. That's it, my spiel's over. Back to the 765 LT. Things to note about the 765 LT in terms of overall design and functionality. It is 2.2 inches longer than the 720S, owed to a longer front splitter, extended rear bumper, and longer rear wing. It is 0.2 inches lower to the ground, which doesn't sound like much, but when you're at the track, aero efficiency matters. In fact, aero efficiency is a big theme to the 765LT. So even though it looks very similar to the 720S, you could confuse the two with a quick glance, get in close and you'll see there's a lot that's been changed. All of the body panels, apart from I think the hood and roof are unique to the 765LT. So this lower front fascia has been re-sculpted and it is now made from carbon fiber, even though it is painted gray, you can get exposed carbon fiber for an optional charge, upcharge, uh, that will just show you all the carbon fiber here. But these panels, along with the meshing in the back, help save 31.5 pounds, quite a bit, while also increasing the airflow. So you've got air coming in here. The headlights have been restyled just a little bit, still the eye socket design that's distinctive for the 720, but now we got more air coming in to the front radiators, air coming in here I showed you, got these winglets to trap air for downforce, along with that extended front splitter, that's trapping downforce. Air coming out here, over and around the wheels. These front louvers are so cool, optional and free. 
and functional. So they take all the turbulent air around the wheel arches, extract it, and manipulate it. These pieces up here in carbon fiber, that's a free one. You get those in carbon fiber for free, mirror caps in carbon fiber for free, and these rear air channels in carbon fiber faux free. Also free are these ultra lightweight wheels and you can get them painted black for free. These as a set save just under 50 pounds compared to the standard wheels, standard alloys in the 720S. 10 spoke look really cool and they are just outside of standard carbon ceramic brakes, 15.4 inch diameters for the front and rear, six piston front calipers made by Brembo. You can have these as standard or you can upgrade to the McLaren Senna's brakes, bigger rotors, bigger calipers, but add in nine extra pounds. So most of the car saving weight, add those in, you're gonna add weight and cost. I think unless you're gonna be tracking this like every day, these standard carbon ceramics are amazing. You don't need the additional braking force of the Senna. Running out of breath. More unique to the 765LT features. We've got this air groove here on the side, keeping the air tight to the body. This channel here with 765LT badging, keeping this air running close to the body and into this rear duct that will then channel it to the engine. We've got a roof scoop that is not free. That you do have to pay $36,000 for, but how many cars on the road have a roof scoop and you can take them seriously? That's my question for you before you judge it. I think it's awesome. And it's got this channel here for the air right into the engine bay that from the inside looks like a tornado. Seriously, the carbon fiber and the design of it looks like a tornado. My thought, you can see the 4.0 twin turbo V8, just a peak at the top of the engine there. Come into the back. Ooh, let's pop here for a second. Polycarbonate rear glass panels are going to save, along with lightweight glazing of the windows, are gonna save an extra 13 pounds. This one has double glazed rear glass over the engine. That's an option. You do have to pay like $8,000 for that. Back here, we've got these arrow blades made from carbon fiber and painted gunmetal gray to match the other panels in gunmetal gray in the car. And they are kind of a compromise because what McLaren would have loved to have done is just hacked off the back of the 765LT. That's the most aero efficient shape, but then that wouldn't have worked with crash safety regulations and the general style of the car. So we get these aero blades, pretty nifty. This massive rear wing bigger than the 720S and therefore giving you an additional 25% more downforce, like 440 pounds at 150 miles an hour. They gave it this little cutout here to improve rearward visibility. But if you have that duct, then forget it. You can't see anything anyway. So it's just a really big active rear wing. Looks amazing while in motion, just doing the air braking thing and ah, so cool. So, so cool. Thin LED taillights. You can see the carbon fiber from that channel going right into the meshing here. Lots of meshing back here to help get that hot air out of the engine bay. And then my goodness, the weapon system, the quad outlet titanium exhaust painted black. If you get the stealth pack like we have on this car and ah, doesn't that just look like it's going to fire on you without notice, just get too close and you're done. Saves weight as well. So it doesn't just look cool. It's not just gonna sound better. It saves 8.3 pounds. As do another, um, while we're outside, another weight saving measure is the lightweight mainsprings. Those save like 3.2 pounds from the suspension. Just gonna throw that in there. Meshing, meshing, meshing. Redesign lower bumper with meshing. What do you know? And then we have this massive lower diffuser. Bigger than the 720S really helps smooth the transition between the turbulent air around the car and the slick moving air under the car. Oh, I did also forget to mention, Pirelli P0 Trofeo R tires, effectively slicks with a tiny bit of tread to make them street legal, are standard on the 765 LT, 235 section front, 305 section rear. But if you live in a place with moisture, they will downgrade you to P0 street tires for no extra cost. If you live here in California, that's what you want because the grip out of them is incredible. Absolutely incredible.
And with that, we're done with the exterior. Let's hop on inside and see what we're working with. To open up these dihedral doors, you stick your hand on the inside of this track, feeling around for a pad, you press, which will then release the door just slightly. Then the rest of it, you just gently, very gently raise it up because the dihedral mechanism does most of the work there. And then look at these doors. So rad. Functional too, because they've got cutouts in the roof that make it easier for you to get in and out without whacking your dome. Still have to be careful though, because I may or may not have hit my head on this a couple times, getting in and leaning forward too much. So just, you know, be gentle with how you get in and out of the car. That's what I'm saying. And looking at this cabin, what are we seeing as themes of materials used? What do we see a lot of? I'm just gonna pretend you answered me. Alcantara and carbon fiber, Miles. Wow, guys, yes. Oh my gosh, you're so right. There is a lot of Alcantara in this cabin and carbon fiber. This one is trimmed in the midnight blue Alcantara with black to keep that blue theme going from the blue exterior, blue brake calipers, and now midnight blue on the cabin. Pretty cool. So you got this blue contrast stitch around the border of the seat going on down. You've got a blue Alcantara strip that goes with the design that comes in tight and then flows back out. And then you have this blue backed and black meshed piece here with more of that blue contrast stitching throughout. Very cool seats. And you get that blue Alcantara here in the door inserts with blue contrast stitching, blue contrast stitching. I like the look. Someone did a very nice job specking this car. In terms of weight savings, this is not the most aggressive way that you can save weight in the 765 LT. Because as standard, you're gonna get lightweight seats that save you something like 39.7 pounds. It's a huge savings there. You can go a step further and get these Senna seats. So you can get Senna brakes. You can also get Senna seats that save you, save you even more weight. Can't remember the exact spec. Or you can go in the complete opposite direction like these and get these sports seats with heating, uh, memory, not massage, memory seating and power adjustments that add back a bunch of that weight that you would have saved. But hey, they're more comfortable. One of the only comfortable things about this car, I will say, is the seats. Because the suspension, be stiff. This one also doesn't go to the extreme with the weight savings because it has an infotainment and AC system which add back some of the weight that you can for no extra cost cut out. If you're, I mean, you're really talking about saving weight, really talking about a track car, leave out those things and you get the set of seats. This one doesn't go that way, but I like it. I like it quite a bit. And yes, Alcantara all up in the place. Got blue Contra stitch, Alcantara, Alcantara on the seats, Alcantara around the wheel with the carbon fiber. Oh, such nice matte finish Alcantara in there. Alcantara on the, on the uh, dashboard there with the blue Contra stitching, carbon fiber, Alcantara. Oh, it's so nice. Fully Alcantara wrapped headliner. No transparent roof panels. So the only time you're gonna see sunlight here is with the door open. So it does get kind of warm in the cabin because of that. And now I think it's time to hop in and explore. Explore a little more. So the way you get in easiest is you sit on the side sill and then grab the bolster and then squeeze your butt over. That's what you do. Pull down the door, grab on the handle, this is actually like, this takes some effort. So lifting up the door, very easy to go against the grain and pull it down. You gotta kind of give it the goods. If you get it most of the way there, then the soft close should do its thing. This time it didn't. So I gotta release the door, pull on the handle, lift up. Didn't have to do soft close because I closed it hard enough. And now let's fire this thing up. Start stop is right there. Foot hard on the brake. And the fully digital gauge cluster comes to life as does the vertically oriented infotainment. One thing to know about the infotainment, this is not the latest infotainment in McLaren vehicles. Like the McLaren GT, you get a newer one with, uh, it's, it's better with the glare and the polarization if you're wearing sunglasses. And it also adds Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This one doesn't have that. So it's limited in terms of its functionality. You do get navigation as standard, press that button. Up comes the navigation. And it's like a tablet where you pinch and zoom. Pretty much is a tablet. I think it's like an Android tablet that they just put in there. And then you have dual zone climate control here. 
and it's fairly responsive, even though it isn't the latest and greatest. You have ambient lighting that I showed some of in my POV night drive. This one has the optional Bowers and Wilkins 12 speaker sound system. That's yet another thing that you can leave out and save some weights or you add it back in and improve your interior sound experience. Carbon fiber trim in here. Some of these things are going to be optional. The places that you have carbon fiber, like the center tunnel, that's optional in carbon fiber. I don't believe you have to pay extra for that, but it does save some weight, like five and a half pounds if you choose those carbon fiber pieces. You can also choose to have this surround in carbon fiber. I'll lower that airflow. It's kind of aggressive. You can choose to have that surround in carbon fiber, part of the pieces that save weight. If you're not familiar with the 720S, then you may not have seen this panel here before. This is your active dynamics panel. If you press this button to turn it on, and that means that any of the adjustments you make are now engaging. Whereas if you adjust it without that being on, nothing happens. You can turn on and off aerodynamics here, press that button. This is your handling adjustment, so think suspension here. Comfort, sport, and track. And that changes some of the things on the gauge cluster. If you go into track either of the sport and handling, it will flip down the display. So now you're just looking at your gear, your tachometer, and then your speed. Take it out of track and it will flip, flip it back. Pretty neat to see that in motion, to be honest. Okay, so that's in sport now. This is your traction control. You gotta hold that for quite a while to turn it off completely. Down here is gonna be your powertrain. So you got P and H, handling, powertrain. Same adjustments, comfort, sport, and track. Go into track there or there, and it'll flip the display. Manual mode, if you want complete manual control over these big, nice, big, and very nice travel and engaging feel to these paddles, then you press the manual mode. Start, stop button. Why is there start, stop on this vehicle? I don't know, it doesn't necessarily make sense to me, but you can turn it off at the press of a button. This is your control for the display and it's, I like that they've got a textured finish for this metallic outer piece. It feels nice in the hand. Sound system's okay, to be honest. It's not, not great. It's a very faint red start-stop system, or start-stop button that gets a lot of glare on it. These all have neural finishes on the, um, on the gear selector, so you've got drive, neutral, reverse. Note there is no park. To go into park in this vehicle, you press neutral, and then you pull the e-brake right here. Do not forget to do that. If you turn the car off, it'll automatically engage the e-brake, but if you don't, you leave the car on and you get out of it in neutral, it's just gonna roll away on you. Don't do that. So pull the e-brake, press it to release the e-brake. Down here, we have your light settings. Again, I like this. They've got a nice neural finish on the border, on the surround for these switches there. And then, whoop, where have I gone? I'm over here now. Now here are your mirror adjustments. Same kind of switch control. Feels really nice to move this. High quality for sure. Continuing on with the center stack, just below reverse, we have our hazards and then launch control. To engage launch control, I would need to be in drive, with the e-brake released, and with the active dynamics and the seat held on, and with the active dynamics panel in either sport or track for the powertrain settings. Then from there, this will prompt you, it'll say, a waiting full throttle with your left foot pinned to the brake. You give it throttle, it will build up the boost, it'll say boost ready, then you sidestep the brake and you're gone. Very simple way to engage launch control in this car. And then looking forward here, we've got this rubberized panel down here, maybe stash or smartphone, and then what looks like a cup holder, but it's a really awkward shape. Not sure what exactly would fit in there. And then kind of randomly a DC socket, I guess, maybe for a radar detector or something. Stick that in there. Looking back, more Alcantara here, and then another awkwardly shaped water ball kind of area because it's gotta have this holder for your key. This is your 765 LT key. You've got the front trunk release there. You've got unlock, you've got lock, a dark metal border there, and then on the back, it's rubberized and says 765 LT. Slick looking key, just like the car. Squeeze that in there, fold that gently. Beautiful matte carbon fiber on the tunnel. Nice place here to stick your smartphone and then plug it into one of these USB ports, not USB-C. And again, you don't have Apple CarPlay, so you're just gonna have to hook up with Bluetooth. And then you've got an aux in port, interesting. 
above that, we've got a netted portion back here for bulkier items. I put my garage door opener in there and fits neatly along with an envelope. Looking up, oh yeah, now we're getting to it. Look at that thing. Does it not look like a tornado to you? Especially with the carbon fiber. So cool, that's the duct from the roof scoop, of course. And uh, it's pretty much all you see out of the rear view mirror. So it doesn't really matter that they cut out that portion of the wing, because that's all you see if you get this option. But then Alcatar for this place where you could store some cargo. If you didn't want to use the front trunk or maybe you've already used it all, you could put some stuff back here. And then you've got Bowers and Wilkins speaker covers for there. Alcantara for the headliner here. Very nice feeling, very, very nice. Then you've got your lights, dome lights. Hello, goodbye. And then some cheaper materials that I've found in this cabin. This scratchy, very cheap, this feels like it's out of a Dodge Dart or something. It's such a bad rearview mirror, so cheap. And then these um, seatbelt covers, the latches, um, very cheap plastic. They do have a felt backing, but it doesn't cover the whole seatbelt. This whole thing would be nice in felt or leather or something. I guess leather adds weight, but it scratches against this center tunnel. You see that mark right there? That would be nice to avoid. That wasn't very well thought out. I would switch that up personally. Looking at the dashboard, we got more blue contrast stitching. We've got airbag. We've got uh, 765 LT imprinted into the dash there. These circular air vents continue here and there. We've got this nice textured border on the outside, more textured border here for this air vent, and just like the texture around this and around that. Love that, love the details. See that exposed carbon fiber on the A pillar there. So cool. And then, oh, didn't mention ambient lighting shows up in here. I'll show you from a POV night drive, but it's pretty faint, even with it maxed out on here. It's very faint ambient lighting, not like a Mercedes Benz vehicle if you've been in something like that or you've seen one of my reviews. Very bright ambient lighting there. You've got some there, some by the window switches, some in the door. And that's, that's kind of it. So that is the large scale of your interior. Oh, I didn't show you this. Pop open the door. Very easy. Over here, you're gonna have a plaque on every 765 LT. It's gonna have the number of the car out of the 765 they're producing. This is unit number 696. This is made in Surrey, England. It's a production facility, 765 LT. It's got depth there. That's really nice. So does the McLaren. That's a nice detail. Very cool. Very, very cool. Up here, we've got the front trunk release, door lock or unlock, and then you can manually fold this. You don't want to go into the active dynamics panel, you just want to show off, press that button, that button, and it will close up. Fold on down, fold on back. Oh, this is a nice detail, I just noticed this. This is actually midnight blue, the center marker, whereas the rest of it is black. It's very faint, but you can actually see that. And my goodness, this steering wheel. So nice with the carbon fiber on here. Paddles are glorious in carbon fiber, nice and big. And the engagement, lots of travel, and you hear that nice click on the steering wheel itself. Here are gonna be your light adjustments. Uh, along with that, these are gonna be your high beams right there. Turn signals all the way up to the right-hand side and left-hand side, and then you got the one touch. That's that down there. This one has the optional electronic adjustment rack. Doesn't cost you any extra, but it does add weight. It was going in all the directions it had already adjusted. And then over here is gonna be your cruise control. And that's the spread for the interior. I do want to show you the front trunk. So I'll pop that open. Make sure the e-brake is on. Yes, not gonna roll away. And while I'm getting out, I will note that carpeting is an option in this car. You can choose to have it without carpeting and you save like five-ish pounds, or you can add it back in like we have here with these neat little 765 LT plaques on them. And then we've got, ooh, nice cutouts into the aluminum for the gas and brake. Very cool. Oh my gosh, the Alcantara is everywhere. Everywhere I look, it's there. So let's go see that front trunk. 
And unlike cars with hoods, this is a front trunk, you don't have additional latches to pull. You've pressed the button, you've done your job, it's released, lifts up. Gas struts left and right to aid you. And you hear, I know you hear it, that loud high pitch noise is from the onboard computers whirring away and they'll just cut in randomly and it's so high pitch if you've got sensitive ears like i do it's pretty annoying one thing about mclaren vehicles i really dislike but let's get back to this cargo area that is massive i shouldn't be surprised i've seen the 720s it's the same thing but on a track focused car like this to have what is it 13 cubic feet of space jd correct me if i'm wrong so much cargo space and so much usable space too. That's a completely flat floor. You don't have bumps to navigate with your luggage and you know, squared there and a little bit of an angle there. But I mean, you could fit two medium sized suitcases, maybe a couple duffel bags on top of that. It's crazy. If the suspension was softer, it'd be a Grand Tour, but that's really what the 720S is for. Nuts. Please be quiet, that's so annoying. I've got a DC socket here. I've got a light right there. What is this? Owner's manual, reference. Power steering fluid. Original wiper fluid, okay. Should I try to get in it? I'm gonna do it anyway. Whether you want me to or not, I'm gonna try. Oh boy, what do we got? Yep, I fit. I fit. Couldn't close that, I don't think. No, that's where it stops on my head. But I fit, I could just hang out here. Have a cup of tea. Awful British accent. Awful. But I can fit. That's impressive. That is impressive. Here's the only bummer with the front trunk. You think that's closed? Heard the latch. Nope. You gotta press harder. Every time I feel like I'm gonna break it. Every time. I worry. But I didn't. Now I'm gonna open up the passenger side to one, have both butterfly doors up looks cool and also to show off the passenger accommodations so to get in we're going to do the same sequence where i sit on the side sill hand on bolster cruise over if you were a lady it's a little different i want to be flashing people but i'm not so we're okay all the noises all of the noises here are my legs i'm six feet tall they are not perfectly straight i do have a little bend in them Whereas over there, they were completely straight. Here, seat is all the way back. Here are the adjustments for the seat. So you got your driver's seat adjustments there, passenger seat adjustments here. And you've got a lot of them. A lot of ways you can actuate this seat, which is cool if you get these sport seats. And then your memory functions are right there. But I have the seat all the way back and all the way lowered, and that's what my legs look like. Headroom, well, right now it's not a problem. But yeah, okay, let's close the door. We'll find out. Yep, still have a couple inches, that's cool. I could probably snake on a helmet, both in the driver and passenger seat, and I don't know this for sure, but I'm guessing the lightweight, more race-focused seats, because they're just on rails on the floor, are probably even lower down than these are, so it might be even more headroom. And that's the deal, that's the passenger side. And I know you saw it, so let's not beat around the bush here. Big bottle means it's time for the big bottle test, McLaren 765 LT edition. Front cup holder, not optimistic. Taking out the key, it's an awkward shape and it's kind of narrow and nope, that's not gonna work. Got this spot under here where I know it won't fit vertically, but can I get it under and in there? Nope, doesn't fit, doesn't fit. Let's try this. This spot here, gently, not to hurt the carbon fiber any more than the seat belts already have. And I mean, yeah, it kind of sits there, but it slides around, so that will come out. I don't think that's an effective solution. Last, we have this netted portion. What can we do here? Can we make it? Yes, we can make it work. You've got a spot for your big bottle in a track-focused supercar. What is going on? Granted, that is not in any way convenient. As a driver, you're gonna have to turn around all the time to reach that, but hey, it's a technical pass for the McLaren 765 LT of our big bottle test. Amazing, the times we live in, so wild. And with that, it's time to get out of here. Don't worry, it was just the plate right there. It wasn't the carbon fiber, it's just the plate right there. It's fine. So what do we have to do? 
what's the thing? What do we do? We like, we get inside the car and we do something. Yeah, that's right. We get in, we rev it up, we take it for a ride. Unlike normal where I start out with launch control for the 765 LT, I just wanna get right into this fun Canyon Road right in front of me. I will do launch control later, don't worry. But I do need to change some things up on the active dynamics panel to get the car situated for the road ahead. So I'm gonna hit active here. That'll illuminate the panel and give me some options that I can now adjust. For handling, let's go into sport. Then for powertrain, let's go all the way to track. Now going to track either on handling or powertrain will adjust this gauge cluster in front of me, making it go flat and giving me just the bare essentials of information. I have the gear on the left, tack in the center, and speed on the right. And now from here, I have just two last steps. I'm gonna hit manual, which gives me manual control over the seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox. And I'm going to turn off the start stop system because that really just doesn't have a place in this car and definitely not in this application. So with that, put it in drive and away we go. Now, I expect that the first part of this is gonna be a lot less talking and a lot more facial expressions, but it's just a guess. Short shift the first gear so we don't spin out. I did warm up these tires so that they're at optimal operating temperatures. And I am expecting greatness out of this. And I'm feeling it. Oh my gosh, these Trofeo Mars is amazing. The updates they made to the chassis control system are incredible. Oh, and then the power. And then the power, my goodness, the power. Oh, the carbon ceramics are so good. The gearbox is so good. The grip is so good. The chassis is so neutral. Oh, oh, Woo! oh, good Lord, this car is a rocket ship. Oh, everything about it, the brakes, these carbon ceramics are insanely good. The steering feel, the quicker ratio that they've given the 765 LT is darty and fun and you can feel everything the tires are doing. Oh, the steering is sensational as well. And then the power, my goodness, this power is out of this world. I've left all the traction control systems on because I don't want to end up off the side of a hill. But honestly, they're not invasive in the slightest. It's just keeping me safe. Jeez. This is not a car. Not a street legal car, and yet it is. How is that possible? How is this possible? Guys. All right, I'm gonna cool it down a little bit and, and talk to you about what I've been experiencing. Um, apart from my throat being in my forehead now, uh, let's talk about the sensations of the car. Let's talk about the powertrain. Big gulp. Okay, take it out of manual mode for a second. Put it back in sport mode. <sighs> okay, so this powertrain, four liter twin turbo V8 out of the McLaren 720S. They fiddled with it though. We now have aluminum pistons. We have a higher capacity fuel pump and we've got a beefier head gasket and then a freer flowing titanium exhaust system. That honestly doesn't sound all that great when you're just motoring around town. But when you're on it, it sounds pretty incredible. This cabin is actually just very, very loud. That's that's part of the reason why it feels like a race car. It's just all the Alcantara all over the place. The stiff, stiff suspension. Uh, they increased the spring and damper rates and they gave it these hydraulic side link things. I don't know the technical term for it, but they're, they're doing their job. Um, and yeah, all of that. Okay, so the engine internals that they, they changed, that gives it now 755 horsepower, which is 45 more than the 720S. We also get 22 pound-feet of torque more. 590 now is the total. 
the zero to 60 time drops, uh, not just with that extra power, but by lowering the gearing so that the acceleration is quicker. We reduce the top speed from 211 miles an hour to just 205, oh no. But the zero to 60 time drops now to 2.7 seconds from the 720S's 2.8. This thing is quick. But it's not just the zero to 60 time that will blow you away. It's actually the zero to 124 mile per hour time. It's the 60 to 124 that kind of just rocks my world. I am gonna turn around here. Because that'll be just 7.2 seconds. So kind of the average time it takes a car to get to 60 miles an hour, you're doing more than double that. 124 miles an hour in 7.2 seconds. Just Picture that for a second. Try to grasp that because from behind the wheel, it feels like light speed. You get to 60 and the car is mostly just trying to find grip throughout that because it's a rear wheel drive car for goodness sakes. But then from there, from 60 to 120, and I can't express this enough, is literally light speed. You're just, you don't see anything like light speed. You're just there at the next stop, the next checkpoint in your brain of fast. That's this car when you're on it. The transmission is lightning fast. So quick are these shifts. Around town, it's you know doing its thing just fine. It's a dual clutch transmission. It's fairly smooth. It's not bucking or anything. But when you're on it, the, gear, the gearbox is one of the best I've ever experienced, if not the best transmission of a road legal car that I've experienced. It's crazy. And I'm gonna pause this right now because I wanna give you a dose of launch control. So to do that, come to a stop, important. Then we're gonna to go to the active panel and you know you can kind of leave it as sport sport and maybe that's what I'll do here. The, eh, no, we'll go into track. Back to track powertrain, leaving it as sport handling. I wanna just look at that tachometer and the gear and the speed. Then from here, I just hit the launch control button down below. It's ready, awaiting full throttle. Give it full brake, full throttle, boost building, boost ready, let go brake. There's a fractional hesitation where it's finding grip and then you're just gone. Nuts! This car is nuts! I love it! I love it! I love it! I love it! The 675 LT rocked my world. This 765, it just takes me to a different planet. It's no longer my world. I'm somewhere in the universe floating around, dizzy with joy and about to die because of asphyxiation. But hey, you know what? Um, that's probably also because this cabin gets very warm. Very warm in here. Very warm in here. And that is one of the downsides. It gets really hot, so you'd be cranking the AC all the time, and then it's kind of loud and kind of annoying. And yes, this ride is rough. This ride is very rough. It's race car rough. And that's, you just have to come in expecting that. Visibility, good out of here. Behind you, well, if you have the hood scoop and the intake system, all you're looking at is a tornado behind you. That's what it looks like to me. Yes, they cut in to that spoiler, so you're supposedly supposed to be able to see back there. You can't, you just see a tornado, and that's all right. You're in a race car. You are in a race car. This, I'm like, ah, uh, ho. Oh. My goodness, this car is ridiculous. This is setting a new benchmark for me, and I'm in some fast cars a lot of the time. This car is setting a new benchmark for me. Seriously. Oh, okay, the overrun at low speeds is kind of nice as well. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's talk about price and competition, just because we have to, even though you should just buy this car if you could, which you can't because they're all sold out. All 765 examples of this car are already sold out, so you better know someone. Price, $385,000 to start. This one is tested with some options. $428,000. 
And really, I think it's like so low as, as supercars go in terms of options added in because they give you so many things as standard or that they'll add back in for free. So that's pretty cool. But $385,000 is 85 grand more than the regular 720S and is a freaking bargain to get a more exclusive, more powerful, crazier looking, lighter weight version of the 720 that you're just not gonna see many of on the road for $385,000 seems like a bargain. But okay, okay, let's talk, let's rein it in with the competitors. This is kind of a weird time right now because the new Ferrari F8 doesn't yet have a hardcore version, so we can kind of just consider that. The 488 Special is kind of old news at this point, so let's just look at the F8, which is more a competitor for just the 720, but keeping that in mind, $275,000 for that one to start. Uh, 211 mile an hour top speed, 710 horsepower, zero to 60, 2.8 seconds. So all those metrics, apart from the top speed, just a bit less than the 765 LT, and that includes price. Then we have the Lamborghini Huracan, and here's where the Performante, also like the 488 Special, is a little bit old news. So we'll look at the STO, the most hardcore track-focused version of the Huracan to date. That's gonna be $334,000 to start, so less expensive than this, but it's only gonna make 631 horsepower. Zero to 60 is gonna be 3.0 seconds. Top speed will just be 193 or 195, I can't remember. Uh, and it's so low relative to the Performante, which top speed was 218 miles an hour, because it's track focused. It's just for going fast around corners. This one kind of splits the difference. It does both of those things really, really well. Uh, I mean, I haven't taken it to a track and this is one of the, the few cars where I'm sitting in going like, I'm doing a disservice by not being at a track. Because I think this would tear my face off on a racetrack. But this can also do street duty. Not necessarily comfortably, but it can do it. This is really for taking you to or from the track to or from the cars and coffee event, to or from the Canyon Road. It's not for just cruising around. That would be the 720S, which is very comfortable and very cruiser. Back to the competition miles, you're all over the place. Which would I have? This, the F8, or even the F8 hardcore version that's gonna come out, I can't talk about that yet. Just this or the F8 or the Huracan STO, which I haven't driven. I've driven the Performante and that was, that was awesome. That was really awesome. I would have this more. The Performante sounds the best by far. The F8 is the smoothest, and this is everything else. This car is everything else. I love it. It's my favorite car on sale. It just happened, just now, I just decided. It's my favorite car on sale. If you know someone, go buy it. If you don't, put it on your bedroom wall and just look at it and think that this is what you want to have one day. Before everything goes all electric, this is the car you want to have. It's the one I want to have. If I strike it rich, which I probably won't, but you know what? I get to drive these, car for, these cars for a living. So my life's all right. Thank you guys so much for watching. And um, uh, yeah, okay, bye.